Welcome to Infinite Craftsman. Today, I've got a new idea. Infinite Craftsman. So here's the idea. I was cleaning off my 3D printer, getting ready to print another one of these business cards that I've been making, and I picked up a piece of support material. Support material is this vertical squiggly line stuff that fills vertical gaps. So whenever you have this overhanging material and nothing supported under it, the printer can't function that way. So what your slicer program does is it automatically generates support to be printed temporarily inside that gap. The print can finish printing on top of that support material and then this breaks out of those spots very easily. And I started thinking about how can I use support material for other things. And I thought like it looks like a tank track and I could use it like that. And I'm like, I'm not designing a tank. That's, that's fine. Somebody else can do that. That's a good idea. You should go do that. No one does anything with support material except rip it apart and throw it in the garden. You should recycle your plastic. Be more like Tim Sway. What if I could design something, print it, and whatever supports are in there, leave them. Leave the supports in the thing that I make and it would be part of that design. So that was the idea, and this is what I came up with. I'm gonna print a lampshade. It's gonna be two circles. I, I don't have any circles. Oh, we're gonna do like two, three, four millimeters circles. I don't know, maybe that big. I'll put one on the base plate, and then I'll put one maybe 100 millimeters up into the air generate support, print, and then keep it intact, take it off the plate, and the support will be my shade. Functional support. Functional support? I need a name. It's probably going to be the title of this video. So whatever that is, that's what I'm calling it. Functional support sucks. So here's what I drew. Now, let's do it again. I'm going to turn off this body, and I'm going to go sketch, rectangle, two point rectangle. I want it on this bottom or from the top view. So click here, drag out to 100, tab 100 millimeters. And then we're gonna grab the rectangle again, but this time we're gonna do a center rectangle and we're gonna click on the center and we're gonna go out 95, tab 95, enter. And there's our rectangle. Now modify, press pull, and we're gonna grab right in between these two, right like that. We're going to type in 10, see where that goes there, and it automatically goes and gives us a preview. Hit enter, and there is now, it went from a sketch to a body. Now that we have that, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to drag over the entire thing. For whatever reason, I have to click on edit, and then I can hit command copy, and then I can click off it and hit command paste, and then you want to grab the up arrow here. So I'm gonna move it up 70 millimeters. So now I wanna create the posts. And the only reason I did that is because for whatever reason, it wasn't working right in my slicer program. Um, so let's connect this sketch, rectangle, two point. I'm gonna do it on this surface. See how I'm clicking on this surface? Now, don't worry, I'm actually looking at that top square, but it's working on the surface I just selected. So just click here, click here. Now I'm gonna move this over. I'm gonna do it on the opposite corner because that's what I'm, that's what I designed. Now watch, I can stay in this view or I can rock out of this view. Okay, and if I go modify, press pull, click on the square, click on the square, and I'm gonna go you know, I don't remember, 70? Or would it be 60? Look, it just kind of snaps to it almost. So it's 60. And I'm gonna hit enter, and, and there it is. That's all there is to it. Look at this, it's working. This is so cool. It worked, it's not perfect, and I could make some design changes to exploit the errors of the printer, I suppose. 
um, I would never make it again the same way. I would I would tweak it always. This top piece didn't adhere to the corners of the support material. Let's take this off and see how it looks. 3D printer hammer. Oh no! It broke. It broke in the corner. Wow. That's not even the support material. Oh, there it goes. It broke in the actual corner where this post is. I do like that you can't tell that there's a designed corner here. That's really neat. I might have to just break this off or I have an idea. I'm gonna break it off. Okay. And then you saw how that gap is there. But I bet you if I glue it on this way, and that's cool. No one will know. You'll know. Ooh, I gotta be careful with this because this is designed to break away. But look at that. That's really cool. So now, here's the real test. And I'm gonna use my light. That's awesome. That is really neat. It's safe. Oh my god. I'm totally gonna break this. That's really cool. I, um, I'm very pleased with this. I, I don't necessarily like this one or this design, but the concept is solid. So using, this is all support material in here. The only thing that's not support material is this bottom centimeter, the top centimeter that got screwed up, and then what are these? Five millimeter square posts, one here and one here, that you really can't even tell are there. If you want more specific information on 3D printing, I'm not the guy to listen to. Go check out Joel at 3D Printing Nerd or Maker's Muse and they'll have so many details on how to do 3D printing. Now the point of this video wasn't to make a cool thing, it was to use a new technique where you're using this support material as part of your design. This was about as simple a project as I could think of to get that point across. I'd encourage everyone to take that and, and make something way better than this lampshade. I do have one other idea on how to utilize support material. It's not for design. It's more of an experience. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe below if you want to see that upcoming video. I don't know if it'll work out, but I'm gonna show you either way. There's a designed corner there. Maybe I should use a different finger.